Amen. If we can have more of that in the house of God, we will do well. Amen. See, everyone desires to stand here. But if we can have more hearts that serve. We have to have a birthday. <laughs> <laughs> if we can just have more servants in the kingdom of God, his kingdom will extend at a rapid rate. Amen. Amen. Disciples Amen. that are sent out. So thank you, Brom, for your faithfulness. He's truly, truly a man that you can put, call his number and say, Oh, but he's a tax owner villa. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for your goodness. And we thank you that you've carried us through, that we're standing in the 12th month. Amen. And, Father, you have been so faithful to us. We want to just say thank you this morning. Let that be our creed this morning. We say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you've done, not only on the cross, but that you do every day in our lives. Every morning when we wake up, the grace bestowed to us to breathe again. We thank you for the little things this morning, Father. We thank you for the word this morning, that you will meet every heart, that you will have an encounter with every heart. In the name of Jesus, we pray right now. Bless this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, guys. If you haven't seen our painting at the back, stand up and turn around to have a look. God has been faithful. God has been faithful. It's a picture of the throne room of God, abstract style. Amen. So whatever you see. Is it Brown? Just see if you can get my thing off sleep mode there, please. So last week we spoke a little bit about Mark chapter 5. Right, and you'll remember the story about, first of all, Jairus' daughter, Mark 5, who died. She had died, and she was 12 years old. Do you remember that story? She passed away, and he came to Jesus. He was a rabbi. He was a man of stature, and he said, Father, I need your assistance. I need your help. My daughter has passed away, and I need a miracle. Is there anybody who needs a miracle today? What me, what me, yes, sir. <laughs> Is there anybody who needs a miracle? Amen. Now, God is faithful to meet you this morning, right at your need. Amen. God is moving. If you cannot sense it, I pray that the Lord will open your eyes to see what He's doing right now. Hallelujah. He's moving. Amen. Amen. He's moving right now. He's stirring the waters right now. Amen. There's no need for you to wait any longer. Jump in. Jump in. The waters are being stirred right now. That's a prophetic word for you this morning. Jump in. Accept it. You are worthy to receive it. Accept it because you are worthy to receive it. Amen. So we are now... So anyway, so we were with... This man's daughter passed away and we had this woman with the issue of blood and we had a, a lovely time last week talking about the woman in the house <laughs> and how beautiful they can be all year round. <laughs> blossoming flowers. With no thorns, you want. We can do it again. <laughs> but how the faith of a woman changed her circumstance and changed her name because she was willing to pursue the master. And she thought to herself, if I can just grab, if I can just touch, if I can just touch him, not even, I didn't have to touch him, if I can just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Amen. And now she miraculously received her healing at the very minute where she touched his robe and his cloak. And Jesus stood up and said, somebody has touched me. His disciples looked around and said, you are crazy, you are mad. Everybody's touching you, the crowd's all around you. But he said, no, someone didn't just touch me, but someone had an encounter with me. And power flew, flowed from my body. And someone received the healing. Amen. And the woman who was in bleeding for how many years? 12 years received the healing. Later on the story, Jesus goes to Jairus' house and he finds the daughter and he heals the daughter after chasing all the faithless ones out. And how old was this daughter? 12 years old. The Lord is speaking to us from the number 12 this morning. Again, and I don't know why. But it's the number of government and authority. Amen. 
divine government, divine authority, and there's authority in the house this morning. Amen. Amen. Let's turn with me to John chapter 4. Let's dive in. John chapter 4. 12. Remember the number 12. What is the date today? The 19th of the 12th month. Remember this day. So in verse 1 of John chapter 4, the word says, Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. So they saw it as a, a race to see who baptized the most people. But the word says, it was not even Jesus baptizing, it was his disciples. But so Jesus decided, I will leave Judea and I will go back to Galilee. Now to give you a little bit of context, the word says here, and this is important, verse 4 says, He had to go through Samaria. He had to go through Samaria. Interesting that the scripture says that because Jesus didn't have to go through Samaria. In fact, the Jews of the day would go eastward of the Jordan for a three-day extra traveling journey just so they didn't have to put their feet in this dirty town. Hallelujah. But the word says that Jesus had to go through Samaria. Now, you may know the story, but I pray that you have a fresh perspective on it this morning. Why did he have to go through Samaria? From, let's see if you have an answer for me. There was a purpose. There was, a, there was an appointment. Hallelujah. And this morning, there's a purpose with you sitting here. There's an appointment with you sitting in that seat this morning. The word says that Jesus had to go through the town because there was somebody there. There was something that needed to take place there. Yeah. Hallelujah. There was one lost sheep. You know, we love a God that, that works in 99. And 99 can also be 12. If you, didn't, if you are with me on my drift, 99 can also be 12. The end. There's no more time. There's nothing left. So, he came to the town in Samaria called Sasha, near the plot of ground where Jacob had given it to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus tired as he was from the journey. Do you read that scripture there? Is there anybody of you who's tired? Hey, is there somebody who's tired? You've got no more energy. What are you? You know, you look like that. You look like that dog that they show in the picture when they show, you know, how do I look this morning in your hardest time, Sue? It looks like you've been in a big main fight. And you're standing in the 12th month, and man, Brown, we've made it through by the skin of our teeth, but we are still standing net net. The word says that even Jesus was tired. Even he knows the struggle we face on earth. Even he knows when you feel like not coming to church on Sunday. He knows what you feel like. He can relate. So when you say, Abba, Father, Give me new strength, I am tired. Our God can relate, amen, to our earthly nature and this earthly body that we have. Come visit us at the gym if you feel tired, so we can make you a little more tired. <laughs> Jacob's well was there, and Jesus was tired from the long journey. So he sat down by the well, and it was about 12 o'clock. It was about 12 o'clock. Something is happening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 12 years of suffering. Girl of 12 years old passed away. And the time is now 12 o'clock. God is coming to meet with somebody this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The word says Jesus sat down. He was tired. And he sat at the well. And it was 12 o'clock. Now anything Jesus does has a purpose. Amen. Even when he went to the cross, that had a, such a significant purpose. When Jesus nailed, nailed down onto the sand with the lady caught in adultery, and he started writing in the sand, it had a purpose. Every time Jesus takes an action, there is a purpose. When Jesus was walking on the water, he had a purpose for that. Amen. So this man, Jesus, our Savior, is sitting at noon. I'm here for an appointment. And then, lo and behold, a Samaritan woman came to draw water. 
Now, let's put perspective of the story, is that it was 12 o'clock, it was hot in the midday sun, right? Most likely, all the other women of the day came early in the morning to draw water because it was a laborious, intensive job. So they came to fetch water in the morning, but Jesus, this lady that Jesus is about to arrive, to speak to, she comes in the heat of the sun. Why does she come at the heat of the sun? Why did she come at that time? Because she was an outcast. She was an outcast. Nobody wanted to deal with her. She would rather let this sink in. She'd rather face the midday sun than face the face of the community. Is there anybody who can relate to what I'm talking about right now? Where you are like the black sheep. You are the outcast. And Lord knows I'll rather walk 10 kilometers to get the water than face that people in the city again. You know, so can I, can I go somewhere this morning? Hallelujah. Sometimes people feel like that about the church. I will rather sit at home watching the Formula One or the rugby or the cricket than show my face among those people you call believers because they judge me. They look at me and I can see the judgment in their eyes. So I'll rather not go. Can we wake up and smell some coffee? In fact, I'm in urgent need right now. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the scorn of the town was so much, she said, I'll take the heat. But Jesus was sitting at the well. When the Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? And we know that was a form of Jesus saying to her, Will you give me your life? Will you allow me to change you? Will you allow me to change the time you come and draw water? Did you get that? Will you come and allow me to change the time that you draw water? Hallelujah! Come on now. For those who have ears to hear, let them hear what God is saying. That you cannot just draw at certain times of the day but that you can come at any time, hallelujah. Yeah. That you can come at any time into the throne room of God and say, Daddy, I need a breakthrough. I need to draw some water. Will you give me a drink? The Samaritan woman said to him, you see, she came with a religious jargon because Jews wouldn't come through the stone. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I a Samaritan. How dare you? How can you ask me for a drink? Because I am not worthy to serve you in your opinion. How can you ask me for a drink? See, Jesus is not interested this morning in where you've come from, what you've done, what the color of your water is here on the farm. Marty, we've had brown water for how long now? You want three weeks of brain water. Jesus is not interested in the quality of the water that you can give him. Hallelujah. In fact, there's nothing that you can give him that he needs. But there's one thing he requires of you. Let's get there. Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked me, and I would have given you living waters. Water that you would never thirst from again. Hallelujah. So the woman said to Jesus, Jesus, my dear friend, you have nothing to draw with. And the well is deep. And what she was really saying to Jesus was, my walls are so high, Jesus. There's no way for you to get through to me. The well is so deep, my heart is so hard right now that there's no way for you to get through to me. You have nothing to draw with. My walls are so high and the well is so deep. I've got nothing left to live for. I've got nothing left to give. But turn with me now to Ezekiel 36. Turn that new heart.
Ezekiel 36, 26. Go to verse 24 of the scripture. So remember this woman is hardened. She's, she's been hurt so badly by society. She's already coming at the heat of the sun. She doesn't want anybody close to her. You don't even want people close. You don't want to get social. You don't want to have friends. Because everybody around you seems to either hurt you or disappoint you. But Ezekiel 36 verse 24 says... I will take you out from the nations and I will gather you back from all the countries and I will bring you back to your own land. Remember, she was from Samaria, but she was an outcast. And I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from your idols. And I will give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit inside of you. I will remove from you the heart of stone and I will give you a heart of flesh. That heart that once was so hard that couldn't love anymore, I'm giving you a new one. Turn to somebody next to you and say, he's giving you a new one. He's giving you a new one. I will put my spirit within you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Then you will live. Say, just live with me. Come on now. Hey, my favorite. My favorite line of 2021. Just live in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When your bank account says to you, my brother, where do you want to live right now? How do you want to live? There's no way for you to live. My Father in heaven says to me, my brother, you better start living. You see, let me say something to you. All right? If you look at your bank account as though it is your source, whatever is in there will either stay there or get less. That is the two options you have. Hallelujah. When my bank account is my, in my source and I'm looking at the numbers 24-7, this one debit order came off, that one came off, you're just seeing the account progressively get less until you hit the zero mark. You're still okay there. <laughs> because it can go through zero. <laughs> can I get an amen this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. It can go through zero into the red numbers. <laughs> now then you really need Jesus. <laughs> when the text gets red, you know you need Jesus in your life. Amen. Or you can say, Father, that bank account has got none of my business. Hallelujah. Amen. That bank account is your bank. It's your business. You said you'd provide for me. You said that the righteous would not be forsaken. The children will not beg for bread. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You will provide for me. So I choose now. You know what I did for the last week, bro? I chose not to look at my bank account. I said to my wife, let's go to Woolworths. <laughs> <laughs> now you need to have some faith. You need to have some faith. If you don't know what's happening in your account, and you say, let's go to Woolworths. <laughs> Fill the baskets. Mark 4. Put in. God is going to provide. <laughs> By the time I swipe that card, there better be some money in there. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then when you're in the shop, you get a tring, tring. Some money is deposited into your account. I'm talking about faith. I'm talking about shopping with money that you don't have. I'm talking about faith, church. You can draw from the well at any time. Amen. Then you will live in the land and I will give it to you. You just got to live. Can I say just live with you again? Yes. Just live. I don't want to say this, Brown, but I'm going, to be, I'm, going to be, I'm going to be honest and blunt. For two households, <laughs> you see this facility we're sitting in right here? <laughs> this is faith, man. <laughs> this, is, this is going into, this is going into, <laughs> into, this is going into Rola Motors, <laughs> Mercedes Benz, and saying to them, give me your best car. <laughs> I've got no money for it. 
but give me that vehicle. This is faith. This is faith. And God has not once. We should have gone through the waters and drowned. We should have gone through the flame and be consumed. We should have been devoured by the people of the land. Hallelujah. But because of His grace and because He is so faithful. You see, whenever you apply faith to a situation, God must meet you there. When we started out this year, I don't know why I'm saying this, when we started out this year, we didn't have a home. We were moving from place to place, and it was wonderful, but God gave us a word. He said to us, I will give you a place where you can rest. I will furnish it, and you will be safe and secure, and the presence of God will rest in that place. That's not a testimony of God's goodness. I'm looking at Marty there, and Marty, you've been such a door opener for this church. It is only by the grace of God that we stand. Not because we've got a lot of money, not because we've got all the answers, but because I've got one thing. The word says, Joseph had said when they took the, the armies out to battle, the worshippers ahead, Joseph had said, Father, this day we've got no strength. We've got, <laughs> we've got no strength, we've got no strategy, we don't know what to do, but my eyes, oh God, my eyes are fixed upon you. And that word carries us through the seasons, through the days, when it looks like nothing's working out. I say, my God, my eyes are fixed upon you, because my help comes from the Lord. Oh, we've seen some things this year, guys. <laughs> Sorry if I get teary-eyed, this has been quite a chapter for us. And not once has my God dropped me. Not once has He forsaken me. Not once has He said to me, my son, you have been in sin. <laughs> you are disobedient. <laughs> you see, when you pursue God, when you pursue Jesus, there is no way you can fail. He is the one sure foundation thing that you've got. He is the one sure thing that you've got. Amen. This woman was sitting at the well. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We can see the evidence of the goodness of God all over our lives. You have nothing to draw with. My walls, I pray this morning that your walls will come down. I pray this morning that your heart will soften to receive what he wants to give you. Amen. He wants to give you goodness and mercy and grace but in order to receive you need to open up a little bit right let's see what jesus does verse 19 everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again but whoever drinks of the water i give them will never thirst again indeed the water i give them will become a spring of living waters welling up within them do you guys remember the cup that we had a demonstration of. The cup was half full or half empty. Whatever you saw, you could say either the cup is half empty or the cup is half full. But Jesus says here, yeah, my intention for you, my thoughts towards you is to have a cup that runs over. That's what David said, my cup runs over, Father. It will become an eternal spring of water welling up into eternal life. The woman said, sir, give me of this water so that I won't get thirsty anymore. And have to keep coming here to drink this water and draw from it. So Jesus, the surgeon, zones in at this moment. And he's got to deal with some things. Hallelujah. He's got to deal with some things. We've got a baptism this morning, Sarah. And I'm telling you, when you get out of that water. <laughs> when you get out of that water. So Jesus was dealing with some things. He was washing away some stuff. He was bringing some things to the light. He said, go back and call your husband. He didn't know this. He said to her, go call your husband and come back. She said to him, I have no husband. And Jesus said, I know this. You are right when you say you have no husband. In fact, you have had five husbands. And the man you are now with is not your husband. 
So what you have said is quite true. She allowed God to look right into her heart and say, I don't have a husband right now. She could have lied and said, I do have a husband. I'm just living with this man, but he's my husband. But she allowed God in and said, I'm going to be vulnerable with you. In that moment, the woman said, verse 19, I can see that you are a prophet. In that moment, she had an encounter. In that moment, she realized that who's sitting across her is just not just another man. The place you're sitting now is not just another seat. Amen. This morning is not just another morning. This morning is an appointment with a king. Amen. I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews to claim that this place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. So she brought her back to, she brought Jesus back to the religion. Can I say something to you? Religion is falling. Religion is falling. She knew she was hurt, and she knew that there's a battle between the Jews and the Sumerians. So she said to Jesus, after she said, you are a prophet, she said, I'll take you back to the religion, because that's what I know. But religion is falling. Amen? Amen. Worship is rising. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father on this, not worship the Father on this mountain, nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know, and we worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet, a time is coming, and now is. Say it, now is. is. Hallelujah. A time is coming, and now is, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for that is the kind of worshipers that God seek. Religion is falling. True worshipers are rising in the earth. Don't look at the number. Look at the condition of the heart. Hallelujah. God is spirit and where his worshippers and his worshippers must worship him in spirit and in truth. This woman said, My God, I know that you are the Messiah, that the Messiah is coming. And when he comes, he will explain all things to us. And Jesus says to her, I am the one you are speaking of. And what blesses me in the rest of the story. I am the one you were speaking of. When she realized who the Messiah was, and this is a word for us for December. Amen. When she realized who she was speaking to, I am the one. The disciples returned with the bread and with the food and with the coffee. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 28. She left the old water behind. Powerful picture. She left the old behind. She stormed back into the town, into the city. The same woman who was an outcast stormed back full of confidence. Why? She was now filled with living water. Your opinion of me doesn't matter anymore. I am new. I'm a new creation. She stormed back into the city and said, Come! See, here's a man who has told me everything I've ever done. Could this be the Messiah? A testimony of what she had seen and what she had done. And I pray that this morning's testimony of this facility will bless you. They came out of the town and they made their way towards him. And that day, many, 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 verse 39 says, many of the Samaritans in that city believed on account of this woman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Living waters. Living waters. Can we stand this morning? You can say something, yeah. Mm. I'll stand nice and close to my husband. When Nathaniel was reading um, about, it was made at noon, I heard the Lord saying, I am standing and many of you feel like it is hot in the sun. Many of you feel like you don't know which way you turn. Many of you feel the sun beating down like you're in the middle of a desert. But I hear the Lord saying, be honest with me. Just let me in and be honest with me. Let me meet you at noon, that I may wash you clean, that I may fill you up once more. But come to me now and be honest. As the woman at the well said, truthfully, he's not my husband. 
Come to me now and truthfully tell me what you need. For I am waiting to meet you. I am sitting, waiting. Just reach out to me and let me fill you with the living waters that will never thirst you once. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that prophetic word.